On Sunday morning, 1st October, the NLC and TUC were firm on their resolve to proceed with the mother of all strike scheduled for 3rd of October. And they raised very critical questions in their independence anniversary speech. But by evening of Sunday, they had a meeting with the federal government where certain changes are being speculated to have taken place. What are those changes? Are NLC and TUC satisfied enough to call off the planned strike? We shall be discussing with the NLC this morning on The Breakfast to get answers to these and other questions. Nigeria has clocked 63. We're going to be looking at the state of the nation 63 years after independence on the show this morning. We'll also be taking a look at the front pages of some national dailies with our analysts joining us on Off the Press. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Maureen Menongwe Zigwe. And I am Nyamgul Agaji. Good morning and uh, happy independence. It's just uh, the 2nd of October. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's 63 years. Is Nigeria a successful grandpa or a grandpa that has wasted its life? Mm -hmm. so it's Nigeria a failed be. state. <laughs> yeah. Is Nigeria a failed state? Is there hope? Okay. Those are questions, some of the questions that have been raised as we celebrate our 63rd independence anniversary. How far has the journey been? What are your aspirations? Your Nigerian dream, I keep talking about the Nigerian dream. Do you have a Nigerian dream? Is it being fulfilled? Does Nigeria itself have a Nigerian American dream? Every other country has their dream. Do we have a Nigerian dream? Are there specific things? Are there roads we are taking or is there a particular road we are taking to achieve this Nigerian dream as a nation? Maybe we should start defining a lot of these things and see how we can work towards uh, the, the things. Not just let's exist as life gives us, let's just be uh, existing like that. We should have defined things that we want to achieve and timelines that we want to achieve these things. That's what is done everywhere else, even in families. That's what we do. Indeed, and lots of things have been unfolding. In fact, just yesterday alone, so many things have happened. And one of them is the fact that the FG and NLC and TUC met. They met, and um, a press release was given uh, to that effect. So we take that press release right now. The federal government on Sunday, October 1st, 2023, met with the leadership of the Nigeria Labor Congress and Trade Union Congress on measures to address the dispute arising from the removal of subsidy on Premium Motor Spirit, PMS. The parties noted the following. All right, so the federal government has announced 35,000 Naira only as provisional wage award for all Treasury paid federal government workers for six months following further consultation with President Bola Tinubu. The federal government is committed to fast-tracking the provision of compressed natural gas buses to ease public transportation difficulties associated with the removal of PMS subsidy. The federal government commits to the provision of funds for micro and small-scale enterprises. VAT on diesel will be waived for the next six months. The federal government will commence payment of 75000 Naira to 15 million households at 25,000 Naira per month for a three-month period from October to December 2023. All right, so the highlights. In the highlights of the discussions held during the meeting, the following were the major highlights, and that's from the federal government, uh, the Minister of Information and National Orientation. The federal government, I'm quoting them now, the federal government urged labor unions not to embark on strike action as the issues in dispute can only be resolved when workers are at work. One, and two, labor unions made case for higher wage award, a subcommittee to be constituted to work out the details of implementation 
of all items regarding government interventions to cushion the effect of fuel subsidy removal, the lingering matter of Road Transport Employees Association of Nigeria and National Union of Road Transport Workers in Lagos uh, need to be addressed urgently. And NLC and TUC will consider the offers by the federal government with a view to suspending the planned strike to allow for further consultations on the implementation of the resolutions above. Governor Raz Abdul Razak Abdurrahman of Kwara State and Chairman of the Nigeria Governors Forum and Governor Dakwa Biodu of Ogun State participated virtually in the meeting chaired by the Chief of Staff to the President Femi Majabia Mila. Also in attendance were the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Adun, the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohammed Idris, the Minister of Labor and Employment, Simon Lalong, the Minister of State, Labor, Inkiruka, Onye Giocha, the Minister of Budget and Economic Planning, Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Beta Edu, the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Doris Uzoka Anite, the Head of Service of the Federation, Dr. Folashade Yemiyashan, and the National Security Advisor, Malam Nuhurubadu. The Labour delegation was led by NLC President Joe Ajero, Dr. Tommy Etim Ekon, uh, Deputy President TUC NLC General Secretary, Ima Ugwaja, TUC General Secretary, Nuhu Toro, among others, and Malam Mohammed Idris, Minister of Information and Lees that came out of that meeting. So the question I had asked, uh, will NLC and TUC be satisfied with this meeting? Is, is it enough to call off the strike? Uh, I don't know if, if they say they're calling off the strike. Um, I don't know if their fight is really just for the workers and not for the Nigerian people. And if their fight is just for their workers, it means that Nigerian uh, people will have to look elsewhere for help for a voice that they can talk to the government and hear these things done. Because the things that I have seen promised by the administration, they don't seem to have any effect. And I wonder what uh, six months is for this government. Everything is six months. We're going to give palliative six months. We're going to pay salaries, uh, raise it by 25,000 uh, naira for six months. We're going to, everything is in six months. I don't know if the life of a Nigerian ends at six months. After the six months, what happens? I was just looking at the dictionary and I was thinking whether uh, definitions of palliatives have changed. And I, I saw it, and let me just read it uh, directly. Uh, of medicine or form of medical care, relieving symptoms without dealing with the cause of the condition. Mm. And as a noun, a medicine or form of medical care that relieves symptoms without dealing with the cause of the condition. And that exactly is what is being done. Mm. What are the measures put in place to deal with whatever reason it is that is making Nigerians suffer? Exactly. And nothing is being done. No, no roadmap is being shown and all that. So 35 thousand naira to workers. What happens to the old woman back at home who doesn't earn a salary? Mm -hmm. What happens to the people that do not need to uh, receive? And by the way, 25,000 naira? No, how many, when, how many the president, when the president gave his speech, it was 25,000. No, so they're talking about 35,000. In the evening, he moved up to 35,000. Well, as I said, we, we will be speaking with NLC this morning to find out uh, what next, what next. Uh, this issue of back and forth between government and NLC, we've seen it over time. We've seen it over time. It's, it's, and it's, it, I don't it's know whether a it's joke. a strategy that the government has mastered, you know, because before now, um, the NLC has said that they are not satisfied with mm. the way government is going about the negotiations. In fact, the, they, are, they were convinced that government wasn't taking the negotiations seriously. Uh, which led to them saying, this time around, there's no going back. Uh, TUC joined them, and it seemed like they're, they're, there's going to be a real showdown. Um, but then, you know how it always goes. A few hours to the showdown date, the government calls them for a meeting and then gives them some carrots. And then, But then, you see, some Nigerians are also not in support of a strike because they believe that this will really crumble the economy. 
I understand that manufacturer association, uh, manufacturers association of Nigeria, are totally against this strike because what they economy believe will, it will what, 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 what economy whatever will be is left. <laughs> okay, whatever, <laughs> whatever is left. I'm because, adding whatever is left now because they believe it yeah. will cripple the economy. And since you're asking what economy, yes, whatever is left of the economy, the man that's manufacturers association of Nigeria believe that this strike. Will cripple it, and that nothing good is going to come but out. But is it. that not the idea? Because if 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 you're going to go on strike, you know that there's there's going to be a lot uh, that the federal government, for instance, will lose. Okay, for instance, when we were talking about the toll gate, then yes. when they they close the toll gate, that's when we knew how much billions the government makes from the toll gate, which is not translating to anything that someone is seeing. Mm -hmm. uh, when they are talking about the fuel that they thieves are getting daily. That's when we know the amount that they're stealing, but the one that they are getting, nobody hears about it. So if they're stealing 400 million barrels per day, they will tell us the amount that that will cost the government, but they're not telling us the ones that they are mining, how much they're getting out of it. What is, what is 35,000? I just did a calculation now. 35,000 divided by 600 naira, which is like the average, for a litre of fuel right now, is 58.33. Mm -hmm. And that is not a full tank. I don't know if your full tank is for the something or something. No, it doesn't. doesn't full tank full on an average is from 60, 60 litres. So which means your the government is paying you 35,000 to fill your tank once. And they're talking about six months. I don't know whether that is subject to uh, interpretation that they're going to pay for the next six months or after six months they're going to pay uh, this money. Um, the, the, the president also talked about the fact that transportation will be reduced so much, will be one day, one day, and that's what we talk for Nigeria, mm. <laughs> will be released, reduced. Buses are coming uh, that will be using gas. A lot of these things are coming, but they have not come. So I don't know whether it is a joke. I don't know if I should be on the side of NLC to go on this strike or to be on the side of government that is going to cripple the economy. But as far as every or oh, so many Nigerians are concerned, mm. the economy is already crippled. It's like a shoe that is, has no place for a bokeh to mend anymore. It's <laughs> you know, while you're talking, I, I'm, I just had to dig out the speech, the statement by NLC, mm. you know, their independence anniversary statement, their speech. I loved reading it yesterday. It, it kind of, I just, I was so excited when I read the speech because they raised so many questions. They, they started by, in fact, I love everything about this speech. I, I, I just take it from the top and read the much I can because it's pretty long. All right. Um, it says, our nation with all its flaws at conception possesses a great potential to be amongst the best economies of the world. It had the promises of a nation destined to be prosperous and continually developing. At independence, it began to demonstrate the signs that it was going to fulfill these expectations, especially with all the giant strikes being recorded in all the regions that made up the country. There was a healthy competition among the diverse regions for progress, with persisting and record-breaking achievements all around the nation. All right, so it just goes on and on, and, and then at some point they began to ask some very, very strong questions, regrettably. The decades that followed were marked by a series of missteps, mismanagement, and missed opportunities, the erosion of ethical governance, rampant corruption, and political instability became defining features of our nation. Instead of harnessing our potential for the collective good, our leaders often pursued personal interests, mm. leaving the masses to grapple with the consequences. All right? It's so many, so many, so many things Nigerians must seek to find out why we have become a nation that must import a product which can easily be refined in our nation and why the conscious sabotage of our economy by those who occupy the helm of affairs in our country. We must make conscious effort at finding out what the phantom called fuel subsidy is. How much was it worth? Who was receiving the monies claimed to have been spent? And why the obvious lies when the direct sales and direct purchase agreement was the framework for the import and distribution of products in Nigeria. Also of great importance is the willful bastardization of the Naira and the attendant dollarization of the economy by the nation's leaders. We need to find out whether truly a genuine foreign exchange market exists in its true sense in Nigeria. 
Why will the value of the nation's currency continue a free fall when the value of accruals from crude is rising? What magic has made it difficult for the value of the Naira to remain stable against the dollar, especially when the dollar is being pummeled all over the world? So there are many questions raised in the statements by the NLC. And then they had the meeting in the evening, and uh, here we are seeing that some things may have changed. What are those things that have changed? We need to be speaking with uh, Labour directly, and hopefully we'll be having them this morning, as we had teased earlier, yeah, to well, find out what's changing. Yeah, okay. Now, this is a bullet in ricochet, uh, it's, if that's what they call it. It has hit the wall and is back to the NLC. It, the, all the questions that were asked, were they answered in this meeting? That is if they are going to call off the strike. Because if they call off the strike, we should assume that these questions have been answered. Who was responsible for gulping this kind of amount of money they were telling us about fuel subsidy? And how much was it worth? Have they answered that question in the, in the meeting? All these questions that they were, they were raising were for the people. Nigerian people needed to know these things. Mm -hmm. But if you zero down onto uh, 35,000, that is talking to only labor. They are not the only ones who go into the market. Definitely and all that. not the so, only ones. So let's see if these questions have been answered. But if the questions have not been answered, then labor. Right now, Nigerians, all eyes are on you <laughs> because they were talking about all eyes being on the judiciary. Now all eyes are on labor. If labor says they're not going on strike anymore, it's either these questions have been answered satisfactorily and Nigerians should know, or as Nigerians always assume, they may have allowed money to change hands and then they just call off the strike, which means right. it's selfish. Okay, so let, let's take a look at our top trending. So many things to talk about this morning. Yeah, some so of which we things. have addressed some anyway. Of which we've yeah. addressed. And so the top trending number one, no fewer than 20 people were said to have lost their lives following a tanker explosion at Koko Junction along Wari Benin Highway in Wari North's local government area of Delta State. The incident which occurred in the early hours of Sunday was a result of a spark from a faulty vehicle while the persons were busy scooping fuel that spilled from the tanker. Reportedly, among the dead were a pregnant woman, children, and some elderly persons. It is being reported that the tanker fell and spilled its content on the road and some persons rushed to scoop fuel despite being warned by drivers and security men who had stormed the scene after they learned the tanker had fallen. I tell you the picture, look at the video there, very... I mean, was it not last week, I was up on Tuesday, I was talking about the bad state of our roads. There we have it. There we have it. People never learn from what happens. I don't know whether we forget history or something, but it's so dangerous that if, if you compare the, the danger and whatever kind of hardship you may be facing at this time, it is not worth it. What if there's a spark in that place? Oh, there was, there was these an people explosion. are poor. I know I'm not making excuses for them, but if, if tankers do not fall on the roads, if the roads are not in the deplorable state that they are in, tankers will not fall there, people will not be stranded in traffic for hours, leading to a spark I, that has I led agree. to all of this and I all agree. of these. But if there is a fire in that place, we wouldn't be talking in poverty. Some of the people who are there, are house owners. Some of them are car owners. Some of them are well-to-do. The but, people who go to scoop. We like free things. The and people the, who go to scoop are poor. They're not. Uneducated in, in, people. In my most experience, times. in my experience, I I saw a place where there was this explosion because a tanker fell. People were scooping fuel, and people that were going there. Some of them lost whole families, and they were not poor. They were just people who felt they were Look strong enough and that. brave enough. So while the government has failed these people, uh, has failed us uh, because of the state of roads that we are seeing, that, like you were talking about on Tuesday and all that, we also know that we should, like we say in Nigeria, advise ourselves. Whenever the fuel spills like that, it is so dangerous that it's not worth it. No matter what, you should be poor and alive rather than rich and dead. Wow, look at that. Look at that. It's... Oh, jeez. Oh, my word. So many vehicles we have burnt. I mean, raised with people in them, obviously, because we have 
uh, reports that about 20 of them died. There may be more because some bodies were already removed mm -hmm. as at the times our reporters got there. And so there you have it. It's a terrible thing that we're still experiencing this. People, October 1st, look at that. Yeah. First it's, it's, October 2023. It's, it's, it's terrible. Um, well, um, may their souls rest in peace and may their families uh, have the fortitude to bear the loss. These are people who left their houses to go and, like we say, hustle and put food on the table of their families, whatever it is. They met their... Uh, this unfortunate event on the way because of the carelessness of some people, I, I must say that. I know that accidents happen even in the best of uh, societies, but if it is avoidable, let us avoid these things. Mm -hmm. There are some people who really do not care. If you give somebody a hundred naira to buy a drug that is good enough, he will prefer to buy the one of 20 naira that will not work so that he pockets 80 naira. And then tomorrow you say you are a patriotic Nigerian, you, and everything, when you're caught, you're, you're blaming it on the devil. Right now, we've just seen uh, that this is fresh, or we've heard, because I don't know how that is, uh, we've heard that there's a fresh 3 trillion Naira COVID loans and uh, mismanaged funds that have been unveiled. <laughs> yes. So fresh 3 trillion Naira COVID loans and mismanaged funds by Mefele have been uncovered. How that happened, we do not know. The revelation from the investigative committee set up by President Bola Tinubu has revealed that former central bank uh, governor, uh, Godwin Emefele, stole, that's the word that was used, three trillion naira from two projects alone. Trillion, not billion. <laughs> <laughs> I have to emphasize that if it is true, we don't know yet, but if it is true, that is three trillion. And I wonder... Well, let me just go on. It has now been revealed that a whooping amount was made from COVID-19, COVID loans and the Anchor Boroughs Program Fund alone, just two projects, and there have been many over the years. In July, Tinubu appointed a special investigator to probe the Apex Bank, and in a letter, a letter dated 28th of July, 2023, the president named Chief Executive Officer of the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, Jim Obaze, as the special investigator. So that is what he has uncovered now. Mm. Three trillion naira. I don't know how many generations want to use that, <laughs> um, but if you begin to calculate that money, you'll find out that most of this is just a waste. How many houses can you build? You are training don't your forget, children. Don't forget, don't forget, if it is true, how many, oh if it geez. is true, in addition to all the mon other monies, but don't forget that God will not merely had wanted to contest the presidency. Mm -hmm. And so he must have amassed some of these monies for that purpose, to fund his presidential ambition um, until he was told he could not run for it. If impunity had a word or a country, it would be mm. in Nigeria. And he, he, he returned to being the central bank governor, even when he had contested or tried to contest. Uh, so he went back to being the central bank governor until now. Mm. And there are so many people who have been doing this and nothing seems to happen. In fact, some of them are still in the Senate making laws for you and I. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mm -hmm. wonder how that is. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. country. And, and, well, and, and the EFCC guy yeah. is still somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know what... All the people that he mentioned... That when should was, have been investigated yes, by him they are... are they're working free, but he is in, in jail right now. Well, that's a very interesting angle. Nigeria... Well, they are, uh, Obaze, uh, we're, we're still uh, waiting for more to come from him. Uh, that special investigator, was, we're waiting to hear more from him yeah. because there are other ministries... Uh, government of um, um, uh, Parastatals. I would love to hear from them. I want to hear N about NNPC uh, before it became aviation, the NPC. NNPC, mm. and so many others. We want to hear more about this last administration and all that's happened. Of course, many Nigerians, not a few, are still asking what about Amirfele's boss? Mm. Yeah. What about him? If you know, because I mean, he Trump had is the being approval. investigated. Even exactly. Biden, who is sitting, Joe Biden is still. In fact, he may 
uh, face impeachment and so many other things. His he's son, city, his, his, his son I is. I mean, a lot is so, happening in. So if the people that we say saner clients are doing mm. this, why can't we be sane as well and do the right thing? Exactly. So all the administrations that have come, they had fuel subsidy uh, in them, and people were stealing this money. Some people were giving the go ahead to do a lot of things, and they're walking free. The, especially the past administration that was giving the go ahead to MFLA to. It, if it is to print money or if it is to take loans or if it's to do anything, mm -hmm. they were exceeding the limits and they kept going. And nobody is saying anything. MFLA is just uh, the fall guy that is taking all the things. And many are asking why. What is it about MFLA that he's the main person and the only person that appears to be going through the fire when there were many other colleagues of his during that administration, who have done many things that have left a lot to be desired. Maureen, let's take a break. All right, let's take a break. <laughs> we'll just take a break. We'll but be back. I warn you that when we come back from this break, <laughs> open up on God <laughs> will be joining You're us. Warning, though. And as I said last week, sometimes I don't listen to open up, but you need to go for therapy <laughs> because it's as hot as it can get with open up. Another press in a moment. Stay with us.